Okay, we are now in our lathe encounter. No real way to edit our trajectory until we get close to lathe actually, which is bad because the inclination change costs more there. Um, we can get closer to lathe, though whether we want to or not is a good question because that's just going to boost our orbit even more and gets even more crazy. I suppose we could do that much. How close do I need to be to get the near to lathe one? Probably within 300 kilometers, so we'll set it there. And we'll have to wait until we get out of the lathe encounter to do the inclination change. Otherwise, it'll be too much. Now, which direction should I go for this? Um, let me take SAS off. I'm going to do a burn to start us moving in the axis that I think the maneuver node will will lie in and hopefully we'll hit it sooner rather than later yeah maybe I should use RCS gets us moving a little bit quicker Yep, that's within 300 kilometers. I don't know if that's enough. I think we can now ditch these outside tanks. And we're pretty deep into this tank as well. So that's a little bit worrying. Fortunately, Lathe is giving us quite a boost. But whether it is a good boost or not, I mean, as you can see, potentially hitting the orbits of quite a lot of the moons, but gotta make sure the inclination is right. And the timing. Okay, so we haven't done high above Lathe yet. Let's do one of those. Okay, high radiation environment, glowing samples, usual thing. Okay, so we keep that. Right, now, so let's get our gravity assist from Lathe, shall we? We don't need to orient retrograde per se, because we aren't entering the atmosphere of Lathe. Okay, here's where I thought we'd be close enough. Uh, this still says high over lathe. We can't bother with that because we already have that here. Oh well, so yeah, this turns out to be still high over lathe, so we're not going to get the near to lathe one after all. Now this reads zero, so I can at least see what this maneuver might be like. Uh, that's too costly. We might want to wait until the opposite side. This is still close to Jewel. If we wait when we're out here in two days and then do the plane correction costs much less and we also seem to have an approach with Val lining up there. Let's see about that. Ok, 
Okay, I think that's uh, an acceptable Val encounter, and that'll be in three days. So we'll go with this set of... Well, not set, there's really only one in maneuver here. Okay. Oh well. We did not get two readings around Lath. Um, let me... Before I exit this... No, uh, exit the Lathe system, Lathe sphere of influence. Let me actually switch to Probe Launcher Y to see how long it's got. Here's the probe launched by a Probe Launcher Y. It really only has a barometer, I think, and its goal is to smash right into, right into Lathe. Oh, there's a thermometer. Unless we can land it, which we did on Duna, but I'm not entirely sure we'll be able to do with Lathe. So 11 days left. That'll give us enough time to do our battle encounter, at least. Okay, so... Focus view. Focus view. And switch to. Alright, so exiting the Lace Sphere of Influence. Okay, we are now in... Jules orbit and so we can do our maneuver unfortunately it doesn't really show me what the result of my Val encounter will be presumably the Val encounter will still knock us into a different orbit but it's not really showing me that this green line is the result of the maneuver here not the end orbit after Val so can't plan ahead this time Okay, probably past time to line this up right now. It is an inclination change primarily, so we're probably looking at that axis. Uh, SAS off, RCS on, and give me a burst in this direction. Aha! Managed to hit it right on. Okay, let's see what we've got. Battle encounter as advertised, a little bit higher than I was looking for. Doesn't look like Val does much to our final orbit though. We should get in closer to make sure that it does, because there's no point passing by a moon without getting something out of it. And you can see where Tylo is. We could probably make that encounter with a little bit of help from Val. Okay, well there's a Tylo encounter. Brings us pretty close to Jewel. Costs only 59. Hmm. Planning the Tylo encounter from all the way out here is a little bit tricky. Not really seeing what my resulting periapsis would be. Oh, uh, it's because it's all the way over here. Oh, 231 kilometers, so that's not bad. So for 58, we get uh, very close to, well, I mean, I don't know if it's actually going to be a near to Val sort of thing. But we also get the Tylo encounter. Maybe we should get closer to Val. There's no atmosphere to worry about after all. Um, let's see. Okay, but if we try and get close that ways, it doesn't work out for us on the Tylo encounter. The closer we try to get to Val here, the more trouble it makes for our Tylo encounter. Uh, as you can see, we lose it right there. I'll get within 240, let's say, which preserves the Tylo encounter, and we'll call that the best I can do right here. It's pretty far out after all. So I'll give it a little RCS burn towards the maneuver node. 
This is actually taking energy out of the orbit. We're going to be burning retrograde. So not the most efficient thing to do. Obviously we're dropping to a lower orbit here. Would have rather not done that. But since after this the only places we can go are Bump and Paul, hopefully we can at least get a boost from Tylo. Here we can't even see how long our Tylo encounter would be. Um, so yeah, hopefully Tylo will give us the boost to get to Bob and Paul. Whoa, okay, lots of things happening. Uh, let's get rid of the maneuver node and see what's really going on. Uh, let's just go with our plan. I I'm curious what all that all the other stuff was. Probably a lathe encounter anyway, but Okay, I said uh, within 240. So we gotta stick with that and keep the Tylo encounter. We gotta swing my jewel pretty close too. Not too close, thankfully enough. Now our Tylo encounter is gonna have an inclination to it, about two degrees. So it's not going we probably gonna have to correct that at some point. Probably uh, doing it around here is not a good idea. It's still too close to Jewel. Uh, I can plot that to... Oh no, it's got the effect of our Val encounter built into it. Okay. Right, so let's just encounter Val now. And... Let me make a little maneuver node close to our Val encounter so I can just so I can take it from this view without worrying about where we are. And we are in the sphere of influence of Val. We don't plan to do any maneuvers in this sphere of influence. We just want to observe the materials bay. 225, same glowing samples. Keep the data. That's high over Val. We'll approach our periapsis and see if we get a low over Val. Okay, under 240, which is my estimate. Let's see. Nope, not near to Val at all. Oh well. Reset that experiment, which is fine. If you take a look, that's our last experiment, actually. We can't do anything around Bop and Paul anyway. We'll have to reserve that for Tylo. So, we are going to head out and take care of the Tylo experiment. And then this mission will also be left in a high orbit, so we'll boost it up. So that it won't be interfering with any of the other moons of... Jewel, and then we can leave it as we turn to our other missions. So, we've got a nice long Tylo encounter with a decent periapsis, considering going near to Tylo wouldn't matter anyway, since we don't have two experiments to use. <coughs> Sorry, uh, to use. Oh, well, our current encounter with Tylo seems to put us into a tighter orbit around Jewel, which is definitely not what I want. Um, so, perhaps this will be the right place to make a maneuver to fix that. Ooh. Jewel escape. No, that's actually too high in orbit. Um, actually, Lathe is doing that, by the way. Lathe is so powerful. Ah, this is more interesting. So it'll be Lathe boosting us. Oh wait, but we'll lose our Tylo encounter altogether like this. Okay, let's say we get one a little bit closer to Tylo. See, we're coming in... Uh sort of on the inside of Tylo instead of on the outside.
Yeah, now that looks like an orbit that's not going to encounter any of the moons of of Jewel. Well, except for Tylo itself, but we can boost away from that on the other side. 144 of those, quite a lot. We also don't really need it to be this inclined. Since that'll inevitably cause future issues. There we go. That's flattening it out nicely. Not too much though, otherwise it'll be more likely to encounter one of the moons. That's too flat. Keep it inclined a bit. Okay, so that'll be good enough to clear everything except for... Oh wait, I think we're gonna crash into Tylo with this. Hmm, that's too close. Tylo's not being very helpful here, honestly. It's not that there's no Tylo encounter, it's that it's not calculating the Tylo encounter at all. Okay, okay, I give up. What we're gonna do is we're going to at least get a uh, periapsis around Jewel. Right now we're gonna be crashing into Jewel. And. And after that, we'll burn at the dual periapsis in order to boost our orbit. Okay, that's the plan. Okay, slight burn to correct our orbit so that we don't end up smashing into dual. Good enough. And now our tile encounter with our last science junior. And then this this mission will be complete barring its return from the dual system, which will obviously take some time. Everybody is gonna be hanging around Jewel for a while, waiting for their return. Okay, we are in Tylosphere Influence. There it is. And no reason to wait at all. Using the final science junior. Oh, time warping. Observe the materials bay. And the same old, same old as far as the little blurb is concerned. 250 science though. We will keep that. And now we have a truckload of science on this mission. Let's make sure that it is left safely in orbit around Jewel while we do the rest of our business. So, getting out of Tylo's sphere of influence. Which is a long sphere of influence as you can see. It takes a while to pass through it. Okay, and at the periapsis, I'm going to boost higher. Probably around there will do. 200 meters per second was more than I was hoping it would be, but we do have fuel remaining in this stage, so it's not too bad. Alright, and we're pretty close to our prograde vector right now, so it should be... Well, no, it's nowhere near where it's going to be, I think. Let's see. Basically, we need to be safely beyond Tylo. And preferably somewhere between the orbits of Bop and Paul. That's sufficient. And finally, a burn here. Oh, that costs too much. 
Oh, well, as long as we're beyond Tylo, that shouldn't negate the likelihood of any encounters. But set 900, wow. I don't know if we can swing that one. I wonder how much it would take to send this back home now. Just out of curiosity. We're we're sort of well we'll see. Uh, I've got the orbits a little bit off. Uh, there's no easy way to fix that. You know, that's not too far off. And that's not too expensive. Okay, well that's much further off. Hate to be burning from my apoapsis, but that looks like what I'm going to be doing. And this would be a very finicky transfer, as you can probably already see. But if it's going to take 2,000 to transfer, that's better than trying to get pay about 1,000 for a stable orbit around Jewel. Okay, so let me show you why this works. It's actually because the encounter the, with Kerbin is going to occur at the descending node. So it happens to be the case that we can return right where our, our return orbit would cross Kerbin's orbit. Otherwise, the, the inclination change would cost much more than this. So we, we, we can get an encounter here. It's a very finicky encounter, and our, our ability to do a mid-course plane change is minimal. But we can get a Kerbin periapsis. Barely. 56,000 kilometers, which is very high. But we can try this. This is probably better than trying to boost into orbit and also it'll save me from having to manage so many missions around Jules own orbit we'll get this one back uh, or at least try to so even though this isn't the most efficient transfer possible it's better than trying to get that stable orbit around Jules so we'll try for it I'm gonna have to try and do this transfer a little bit carefully as opposed to my normal mode which is just getting it about right I'm not too sure I've got enough practice doing transfers, uh, maneuvers carefully. Okay, I think we're close enough to have to get to the maneuver node and start that off. A little bit unsure of where the maneuver node might be. Okay, I think we've seen it. Okay, probably can wait a little bit longer. We're quite far out from Jewel right now, 109 kilometers, uh, no, 109,000 kilometers, sorry. Don't know exactly how long it'll take to do this burn since we're going to stage, stage in the middle of it. So the latter half will likely be taking longer than the first half. Okay, that's that. Let's see how this goes. Now 
And we're not done just by doing this burn. Obviously, we're very far away from Kerbin on the return. You know, though, I suppose it would be possible to send an asteroid defense mission to retrieve this if if it's coming into Kerbin's uh, Kerbin. Pretty far out, though. Uh, if we could get it closer, it'd be better. But if it is just swinging, swinging by a Kerbin, we have retrieved an asteroid on such a trajectory before, and so we could just use the claw to claw this. It's possible. So I mean, even if it is in too high trajectory to get captured by Kerbin by aero capture we might still be able to bring this information back. So that's... that'll be an interesting mission if we could time that properly. Ah, we've got, we've got a substantial amount of fuel left. Not bad. Now let's see what our actual situation is. Okay, I thought I already saw the... Yeah, I saw the maneuver. Um, Not the maneuver needing counter. I'll use RCS to correct this. Uh, oh, no, wait. I have to turn SAS off so it doesn't spend the RCS. Okay... I see a periapsis, but it's not going in the right direction. Uh, 79,000, that's not as good as I would have liked. But it would be better to get into interplanetary space before trying any further adjustments. So. Yep, let's do that. Uh, how long? Oh, no, we can't. Okay, so. The situation is that this is on Good Julian Escape. And before it actually escapes, though, the probe launcher Y will enter the dual system so we have to make that the the important thing now other things to note of course the Duna mission is on its way back and by the time we've uh, gone 14 days which is when this mission will escape the Duna mission will be quite a ways away on its uh, trip back home uh, which is only 75 days so lots of things going on Tune in next time to see whether I remember the order of operations here. And uh, the first thing we need to do is get Probe Launcher Y situated in the Jewel system, meaning uh, on its trajectory to air break around Lathe, right? It's, it's going to try and air break around Lathe. Then bring this mission out into interplanetary space, and then see how close the Duna mission is to any adjustments it might need. Uh, fix this one up if it needs an inclination adjustment on this side and all sorts of other things like that so uh, thankfully the GU mission will arrive in 40 days after the probe launcher Y mission though that will still probably be before the Duna mission actually reaches Kerbin so we've got a lot of stuff going on concurrently uh, it's possible that we can bring the manned mission back, given that it only took about 2,000 meters per second of delta-v to bring this one back. Uh, Any time now we could bring the manned mission back, though. The longer we wait, the more efficient it'll probably be. Well, it depends. Uh, we are now at the ascending node for the transfer, so maybe it'd be a good time now. We'll see. So lots of stuff to take care of, and so I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do remember to press like, uh, so that I know you want to see more of these kinds of videos. And uh, yep, with that, I'll see you next time.